my apologies for the lateness of this video. As you can see, I'm a little busy. So I've been trying to take care of this around uh, my vacation. So a little late, but hopefully I will get it up before the next episode starts. While studying the moon of Kirchhoff, Spock and Chapel encounter an anomaly whose creators deem it necessary to repair damage done by their technology. However, they flub Spock's care and he loses himself, the result of which creates issues when entertaining his future in-laws. This and more life complications on this week's very Chapel and Spock-centered Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2 Episode 5 Charades. And this was an interesting episode, but as I'm trying to get ready for a trip to Florida, I'm going to try to make this quick. So this is our first standout scenes, and that's going to be the reveal of human Spock. Yeah, Ethan Peck played that uh, version of Spock really, really well. The emotions and the confusion. He did a fantastic job. But it was a nightmare come true for Spock. And so having the added complication of an engagement dinner with his very disapproving soon-to-be mother-in-law, it was just an interesting episode and a great challenge for our newly human Spock. For my second standout scenes, it's the interdimensional space scenes. Yeah, I like how they showed the conversion from normal space to this weird, crinkly, mirror looking universe. It was great and subtle, but let you know that they were going from one type of... Uh, dimension to another. Now, although interdimensional space was more scenes than just one, I am counting it all as one because we got a lot of information there. Not only about the Kirkovians, but about Chapel and about Spock. Chapel, of course, confesses how she feels mostly about Spock. And we found out Spock, he diverted all shields, saving Chapel and ignoring his own safety. Now for my third standout scenes, it's going to be the tea ritual. Because here we see everything that we sort of expected to, but it was done really well. We see the very disapproving to Pril, and the very nervous to Pring, and the very human Spock. Poor Spock, he burns his hands trying to pour the tea, but he does it very well. To Pring, of course, very nervous about how his pouring is going to be if the flower doesn't bloom, it's not done properly. And the fact that to Pril actually didn't have a problem with the tea was a minor miracle however she's still just a real pain in the rear and quite frankly I'm sort of glad the future goes differently so that Spock won't have to worry about her you know every Vulcan holiday now for my fourth standout scene it's going to be the one at the very end where Spock and Amanda have a little talk about the memory she shared this was just a very wonderful scene. It's, it's always nice as a parent when our children acknowledge some of the struggles that we went through. Parenthood is not easy. Even if parents make it look like they're perfect and have no struggles, trust me, there are always difficult times. And so having Spock actually be able to see that uh, in, from Amanda's point of view, even if it was a memory about him being accepted, he saw what it was for her loneliness, what she was being rejected on a regular basis and he understood now how she felt about that now we are at that halfway point if you've enjoyed this video so far please like below don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you get notified for the next video when it comes out also if you'd like to please join and become a member of this channel you can also become a patreon both come with perks such as extra updates life updates and behind the scenes Patreons get a version of these videos without ads, while members get updates while I'm out and about a little more regularly. And if you'd just like to support the channel, please feel free to give me a thanks below. I really appreciate it. And now, back to our review, and we're up to the honorable mentions. For my honorable mention number one, it's going to be Spock's ears. Yeah, it was great to see those prosthetics. I, I wonder if they're his regular prosthetics or if it was something mocked up just for the show. Either way, the prosthetics crew always gets a thumbs up for me. Everything always looks flawless. But it was really funny to see Mbenga walk out with them on their own special ear hangers. My second honorable mention is going to be Amanda teaching human Spock how to be Vulcan while being human. My hand hurt watching Spock pick up that tea. He did a really good job of showing the agony Ethan did. 
but poor Amanda. Think of all the suffering she's gone through just to be able to have tea with the neighbors. The scene where they try to fake a mind meld, obviously they find out they can't fake a mind meld, or at least Spot can't, but the uh, comments from the peanut gallery were priceless. But I think the best part of Amanda's lessons was Spock's reaction before the lesson started as she just barely mentioned how his work might interfere with his relationship with T'Pring. Now my third honorable mention is going to be T'Pring's dad. He was a fun little bit of comedic relief, surprisingly. Not only did he have no problem with the space being used for their engagement rituals, but he was really happy about the food despite the salt, and couldn't wait for things to be over so he could get to eating. Really, I think he would have been one of the more enjoyable Vulcans if it wasn't for the influence of T'Pril. Now, my fourth honorable mention is going to be Chapel's persistence. We see her persistence as she prepares for the interview for the fellowship. Her entire crew is helping her. Her friends are quizzing her as her day goes along. It's really nice to see that she is really gung-ho about getting ready. We also see how persistent she was in trying to create a cure for Spock. No sleep, no progress, but she kept trying and kept trying to think of new ideas and ways to accomplish it, which led her to her persistence in trying to talk to the Krakovians. Whether they were going to talk to her or not, she was finding a way. Luckily, she's got some friends who are able to help her. And Uhura was awesome in this. Completely vital, not only in their initial contact, but in getting away to talk to them again. Well, of course, her and Eric is fancy flying. Her persistence in ignoring the feelings she and Spock have, right up to curing him before he accidentally admitted it to her. Not that that mattered too much in the end. Now, I do have to make a note of something that doesn't make it on this list, but um, did that door shut on Pike on purpose? Yeah, just wanted to ask. Now, when it comes down to it, the things we learned are that uh, customer service, it sucks everywhere. You have to convince them to actually help you. It's just life all through the universe, no matter the dimension. Great news. But we also learned that Spock has a great crew and a great group of friends willing to go to just about any link to make sure that they get their Spock back while also trying to help human Spock figure out how to be human. We also found out that humans Spock's teen years would have been a real challenge for Amanda and for Sarek, and it's a really good thing that uh, they had half human, half Vulcan Spock to deal with. Human Spock has crazy emotions and very little self-control. <laughs> That's why we have an adolescence, to actually learn how to deal with it. <laughs> Poor guy, thrown in the deep end. No lessons on how to swim. We also found out in the end the chapel was denied the fellowship and well she has a better chance of learning what she wants to learn on enterprise anyway and she will not be reapplying unless of course that's a twist that they're going to throw in later now for me it's always nice to see amanda again i enjoy her relationship with spock and how they've developed it between discovery and strange new worlds i enjoyed the actress and she's done a really fantastic job with the character Despite the ending, I really actually enjoyed to pring this episode. I, I'm not a big to pring fan, and I really felt bad for her by the end of the episode, not just because she and Spock had to split up, but because her mom. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to have to deal with her mom. In total, I thought this was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. It was entertaining. We learned more about Vulcan culture. We get to know our characters a little more. Even though things seem to be going very off-canon with Spock and Chapel, I have some faith in the creators that they're going to bring it back to a reason how and why they have the relationship they do in the future. So I'm interested in seeing how that happens. And um, that's why I'm not saying that Chapel might never go to that fellowship. Sometimes you need a little separation from difficulties, and that might be the excuse. But in all, a really good episode. Highly recommend it, and I enjoyed it. was very entertained, and I can't wait to see what happens next week again. Hoping for a new adventure. Um, I will be out of town, so you will not see my little corner behind me next week, but I will have a review out. I hope you'll enjoy it. Have a great week, and until next week, please check out one of these videos, and I'll see you there.